if it doesn't cut everything out. All right, I think we're good. And find my chat window right there. That means I don't need that, which means I don't need that, which means I think we're good. Uh, yeah, the the shopping mall music. I, I wish my grocery store played that because we got. Uh, it's like Tuesdays and Thursdays. I think my grocery store plays country music, but they just play, play Nashville pop. And then the other days of the week, there's I think there's one day where it plays some temporary hits, and there's two days out of the week it plays like R and B, which which is nice. And I like like. Um, like late '70s stuff, like the Commodores and stuff like that. I think I like that. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I have some of the Commodores in my iTunes play. Sweet. Yeah, my favorite is oh. Night Shift. Yeah, that that's my favorite Commodore song. Um, it's the Costanza says get Roman uh, a PlayStation Jet Moto Jet Ski. I don't know what he means by that. Um, he'll jet ski at that point. Honduras says, what is this? Well, what this is, is because what this is, is we're going to talk about how to avoid being one of the most embarrassing things in the world. A There's nothing more, worse than uh, uh, a sad old man than a sad old poor man. And I think the call just dropped. I'm not sure. And it did. Okay. See if it works there. You still there? Yeah, still here. Sorry. Okay, good. That. I fumbled. That's all right. <laughs> so well, <laughs> so welcome to uh, our guest today. Uh, it's my friend Mike. Uh, he helped us out with many of the Chicago shoots, and you've seen him on RCR. We didn't. I don't think we ever reviewed any of your cars. Your your Passat was our camera car in Chicago, right? Yeah, the blue, uh, the blue golf sport wagon. Sadly, yeah. uh, no longer with us. Oh well. Yeah, and, all cars uh, come and go. All cars come and go. And also, uh, gosh, you were out here. I think you were like on the podcast at the at the old apartment. Maybe. Uh, we went to Chrysler Nationals. That's right. That summer. That's right. You took me to Chrysler Nationals. Very kind of you. I was road tripping. Absolute gentleman. I appreciate mm. letting me crash on your couch. Oh, now now we got two beds for you to choose next time you're here. Oh, I can fart in bowl. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, M. Tanier 304 says, love the blue state Republican character in this week's video. Yeah, thanks. That that was based off of all the old guys that I see in the cafe and around town. It's like their myopic vision of their their myopic. It's not that their political affiliation is their identity. They're they're kind of do uh uh right right-leaning doomers is a good way to put it. I mean, you could almost put them on the Q spectrum, but they they all have this common theme of it's all going to hell. But they're you know, not doing I, anything I, I, about it. Other than, like, maybe they went to January 6th. Maybe. Or maybe they wish they were there. Like, um, essentially, I, I, I kind of see them as cowards. But... When you think of who's brave, well, the, the people who are brave are the people who make bad decisions in their camp. But, and but that's all camps on. What's that? On all camps, honestly. When you yeah, right. Delve yeah. into it, like that. right. Um, but I, I I can relate to that character all too well because I have a couple of those in my life. Mm -hmm. um, that being a, I'll be diplomatic about it and leave it at that. Um, but the way that they look at the world, it's it's as if they're they can't adapt to change. 
that no. can adapt to the coming inevitability that they too shall pass. Yeah. And it's, it's like a late reckoning with mortality almost. Exactly. Yeah. They, they see their own decline as a decline of their universe. Um, yeah. yeah. When in reality, the universe is going to keep on ticking, baby. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's going to be here long after you're gone. It's probably in a better version of it too. Um, uh, Austin S says, how is bad dragon stock yet? Well, they're a private company, but, uh, they are private. but maybe I, I, I don't think like something like that. I mean, what would you even classify them as like just a, um, a, 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 a oh, God, a I don't textile company. They have to be uh, miscellaneous goods provide, uh, a, a entertainment possibly possibly uh, sculptures yeah adult sculpture I, I mean i don't i don't know you'd be you'd be playing with some interesting territory about that because there is still a lot of um uh, you know the, the market can be a little bit old guard i just times. typed in porn um, hub and td ameritrade nothing came up <laughs> <laughs> all right all right let's i'm gonna i'm gonna pull up my my schwab window here let's see B. D R G N. Nope, nothing. No, nope. I, I got no. I got nothing. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, between Mike and myself, uh, I'm a new investor. I've only been at it for about five or six years since I started like um, talking over with my accountant. You know, other YouTubers they they buy cars, they put money back into their uh, into their YouTube channel, or they buy or make bigger projects. Uh, myself, I put as much money I can into my self-funded IRA as possible. I wish I could do like 10 times as much, but those are the laws when you have an S-Corp. Um, mm -hmm. But what we're here to talk about and, and, and answer questions is how can you plan for when when you, when you start taking distributions, uh, 65 or 68? Mm, I think 65. I gotta look that up. I don't yeah. remember. So when we say distributions, like when you invest, uh, when you buy stocks, and this this is what we're talking about. We're not talking about real estate tonight. When you buy stocks, you are putting your money in something that's going to grow, that's going to outgrow inflation, which is something people are understanding in this past year. Before it happened slowly enough that you kind of didn't notice it, um, but now people are realizing that. Um, with the influx of, of more, you know, dollars into the economy, each individual dollar is worth less. So some of your money should go into something that grows faster than inflation, hopefully like 50 times faster. So that when you're yeah. uh, of 65, you now have more money that's... We, we we can talk about taxes, but I'm not an accountant. Uh, the over under is that you always say Roth IRA, that type of uh, retirement account. I think I think your growth is is tax free. I don't have a Roth. I just have a regular old SEP, self funded IRA, which means I'm going to be mm -hmm. taxed at age 65. Uh uh, but I'm still going to be net positive uh, over if my money was just in the bank. So. In the past two years, people started to understand the volatility of the stock market with meme stocks when they started uh, uh, buying, artificially pumping up the price of AMC and uh, and GameStop. That was a fun roller coaster. And now people are was, like, yes, that that was a sitting there at 8 a.m. in the office watching people on Twitter ramble about it, posting diamond hands, and I'm, I'm sitting there going, oh, please, you guys are going to get run over. Yep. And I, I'm it's like, who's going to get caught holding it? Yep. But anyway, I did, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, you're, you're completely right. Uh, my dad calls those roller coasters. Like, hey, they're fun to ride, but eventually you're getting off, and it's, not, and it's all over, man. Um, mm -hmm. and the come down's hard. Oh, it is so hard. Uh, Esther yes, outcome asks, lose. Esther outcome has a, has a question and I don't know how to answer it. Esther outcome says, what can I do if I can't financially invest? 
Now, now we need to know what exactly does that mean, because even with apps like Robinhood, you don't have to buy individual stocks. You can buy fractions of them, which is a totally normal thing. You can buy fractions of them, and you can also choose to buy individual um, you can choose to buy ETFs as opposed to buying a certain company. You can buy that group of companies. Yes. So you can mitigate your risk exposure. Yes. Uh, uh, ETF is the charcuterie board of stocks. I'd like a little <laughs> bit of everything. <laughs> that's, that's, that's actually, I'm going to write that down. It's actually a very eloquent way of describing ETFs, Brian. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that. Thank you. It's all yours, man. <laughs> The anti -pasta. Okay, we got our first question here. Connor Close says B A C hyphen L. Now I've never heard of a stock symbol that has a hyphen in it. B A C hyphen L. Oh, Bank of America. Bank of America. Most hated bank in the world. Yeah, and you want to buy the preferred, right? BAC dot L. That's how it appeared on my. Did I get that right? Interesting. On uh, on TD Ameritrade, it's BAC hyphen L. But I'm seeing Bank of America Corp. Yeah, I'm seeing Bank of America, but it's coming up as the preferred on my end. So, it's same here, PRF. Yeah, yeah, that's the preferred. So you want to buy the preferred? So that's buying preferred is a good idea, um, especially if they have a big dividend payout. Um, well, let's have a look at that. If you know the or if you know that the uh, you know the company's going to either be liquidated, dissolved, or whatever, and get paid out ahead of everyone else because you own the preferred. Um, but it's very ex on my end, it's very expensive. Yeah, uh, uh, what, the, individual the, price. I see <laughs> one, two, three, four. It's <laughs> over a thousand dollars. Yeah, one, two, three, four decimal eight. That's um, <laughs> that's a big chunk. Uh, you're you're buying in something that's safe, but I I don't, I don't usually. I don't invest in the financial companies usually. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mike and I have very different. Uh, wow. Look at that chart. Like the only dip was the financial crisis. And then it is rock steady from 2010 until now. Just nothing. Go yearly. Well, See, this is the type of stock I like that doesn't do much. Interesting that my TD Ameritrade is not reporting a PE ratio. But I see annual dividend of uh, $72.50, dividend yield 5.84. Um, yeah, I'm pulling that. In a very money ball way, uh, I judge a stock almost, in, you know, how the, for, for those of you who saw the, 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 the movie Moneyball, where they tried to get everything down to the on base percentage. My initial judgment of any security, and security is just another word for stock, is uh, solely by its dividend yield. First of all, do they pay a That's dividend? That's a very intelligent, way. Oh, a thanks, very intelligent thanks, way of going about stock ownership. Uh, is, is if you want to, if you just want to hold something, you know, it's going to do fine. And you can just live off, you can just take the dividend payments and put that as a, and put that as a W in your, in your profile. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's, it's a very, very intelligent way of going about investing. Mike that's has a, a Mike has a, a, Mike has a different approach. Sorry, uh, in, in our past conversations, uh, Mike said he's, uh, not afraid of going in and out and in and out. Yeah. You, sometimes you, you have to, you have to day trade sometimes. So I, I am a junior broker and a stock market analyst and I day trade occasionally. I don't do it often because I'm still in my first years of trading and I don't want to overrun myself. Um, but buying things like preferred stocks is just a very intelligent way of going about these, you know. So especially if you find a big dividend yield stock. Uh, Joe <laughs> Rinaldi Music has a very what I would consider a hot take. Says if you didn't get in during COVID, don't do it now. Okay, but we're looking at long, long, long projections. Um, yeah, expect, yeah, yeah, it. it the market long time wants, you know, over the course of history, wants to continue to go up. Despite, even lately, despite what the socioeconomic status of our economy is doing. Yes. And the market continues to want to fight upwards. Now, as I was um, 
touching on before and you were touching on, we have different ways of going about our investing. Yeah. Um, I go in and out of positions occasionally, and I'm also a value investor. I like to find stuff that's been kicked to shit and hopefully uh, we'll come back, you know, based on their, uh, you know, their earnings performance or their big dividend payouts. It's just, it's a lot of research. You know, yeah. it, it's, it's a lot of digging through earnings reports and reading call transcripts or listening to the calls or trying to fight to get in so you can, you know, get your mm-hmm. questions answered. It, it can be a headache. But to say that you, if you, to say that you miss the boat entirely is to just completely write yourself out of potential prosperity in the future. Right. And yeah. I'm not saying that as a as a as trying to be a flashy used car salesman or as a hey, you got to invest yeah. now. You got to yeah. you know, I got this. Uh, no. Long term, you want to put money in a group or a bunch of groups or whatever it may be that you feel comfortable with, and as time progresses, check in occasionally, monthly, weekly, monitor it, and adjust as needed. So. While there may be periods when the market goes crazy and then comes back down, if you look at the long chart of the stock market throughout the last hundred years, it comes back despite recessions, despite wars, despite pandemics. Overall, line only goes up. And, uh, you know, there's going to be periods of hurt, but to write yourself out of it entirely is. You know, that's if you want to just be, if you want to just sit on your, your nest egg, that's fine. You yeah. know, it, it's not a game for everyone. It is not a game for everyone. We have a question here for Victor Martinez. I know I have uh, a number of questions for, uh, for Mike as well, as this evening goes on. And I hope I can restrain okay. myself by only drinking two martinis and not three, because the last time I woke up with a headache. Um, yeah. Victor Mark, I'm, I'm getting to the age where I can't drink like I used to when I was 21. Yep, making yep. making stupid vines. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Victor Martinez yeah. Uh, has an interesting question. Uh, he has okay. His portfolio is 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 a good start. One thousand eight hundred dollars worth of stocks. Most are from mm-hmm. Stellus. I've never heard of that. Stellus Capital. I'm what? guessing that's a financial. What's their symbol? It's a good question. I don't know. I'm gonna, symbol? Uh, we're going to find out here in a second. Stella, S-T-E. Uh, oh. C- Sierra Charlie Mike. S-C-M. Stella. That's a mouthful. Yeah. Okay. Let's take a, let's, let me take a gander here. Yeah. He's uh, wanting to know if he should uh, keep what he has or I'm assuming diversify. His question is, uh, should I be looking at stocks that have great dividends and low cost? Those two things are usually much mutually exclusive. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. He has eight that on $1,800 in his, in his portfolio. So Stellis Capital is a financial, I'm going right to their chart and I'm, Okay, they've only been around since 2020. Let me pull out my value line, <laughs> dude. My get my binder out, <laughs> dude. My dad was I'm doing that. I, I gotta send you a picture because he wants to tell me things, but he's kind of a sage on the stage, and I want to ask him questions. But he's on a on a train ride of like <laughs> basic fundamentals, and it's my time to. Yeah. To like, hey, what do you think of this? What do you think of this? And he's like, hold on, I have to do a preamble for a little bit. And okay. yeah, no, I, I, it's 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 a it's a risky game, and I understand that you know, might be in tepid towards it. it. Looks like this is uh pretty. I see my Bollinger bands, and this is what people can see on my end. Uh, Bollinger bands uh, let me know the risk of something, and the farther apart they are, the more uh, I am about it. Uh, um, SCM went shot down in 2016. It rebounded. It really crashed down for the pandemic. Bounced back. Um, it just doesn't look like it's going anywhere, really. It looks like it's just hovering around about fifteen dollars a share. But uh, but from what I'm reading here. People are saying buy their their revenues going up here, but they're estimated it's going to be over eighty million in twenty twenty three. Okay, estimated. So what is that? Seventy three point three two 
in December. What is their earnings call? What's their last earnings look like? Let me dig through some transcripts. Because it looks interesting. It just it doesn't seem to really go anywhere. Yeah. Uh, what's the dividend on it? Annual He's just non- looking to hold it. I guess he can hold it. Next earnings announcements. Dividends. I'm not sure if Oh, it's got a ten, it's got a 10.9% dividend yield. Oh, that interesting. Ratio of 91%. Oh, that's a good that's good. Sir, congratulations. You found yourself a decent dividend yield payout. Wow, I've never heard nice. of this. Look at that. Should I just shove money in this thing? They don't pay for Hmm. Huh. What's their financials look like? Okay. I brought a notebook. Yeah, that's the <clears throat> yeah, this gentleman's just looking to hold this, yeah? Collect that dividend payout, man. Yeah. All right, so Victor Martinez... Hey, want to ha- diversify one... Sorry. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No. Uh, <laughs> Victor, <laughs> Sorry, this Vic- is Midwestern and Pennsylvania. We're going to try to outpolite each other. Yeah. <laughs> Victor Martinez uh, has one other security... And it's the big F, Ferd. <laughs> I, at, I do not own any automakers. Even Toyota, no, I wouldn't bad buy. Bad game to be playing right now. Yeah. Bad, bad game to be playing right now. Ford, they just, I saw an article come up. Where is it? I've got I've to have it up in here. Hold on. Um, by the way, Brian, what uh, soft, like what websites do you use for just poking around and digging through stuff? Do you use just TD Ameritrade stuff? Yeah. Or do you use any other Bestopedia or Seeking uh, Alpha or anything like that? I've never heard of the other ones. I'm open to... I mean, I, I like Seeking the... Alpha. I, go ahead. Sorry. Seeking Alpha is actually pretty... Uh, I, I use it. And I just it, it actually started out as something that my boss said, you know, 20 years ago or 10 years ago. I'll fucking joke. But now it's actually a very... Um, decent research platform uh, with a lot of news and a lot of headlines on individual stocks, companies. But it's just a tool to use um, for everyone listening. You know, that's it's one thing that I use, and it's it's pretty insightful. Wow! I, scroll through it and I, scroll through there. I like how they go all the like. Give me the max data on on Ford Motor Company. Look at that motherfucker back in 1993. Amazing! 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 <laughs> Tanks right? like crazy in 94. Gets a little bit back in the late 90s. Oh, I love this. 2000, 2001. Oh, Trade Center. <laughs> and then 2009. That motherfucker lost 96% of its worth in 2009. Bounced back. Got a little bit of a bump back in uh, when everything went crazy after the panda, the the pandemic pushback and now it's just brian uh brian do you happen to see on there uh, if you're looking at i don't know what you can see because i have an account with um seeking alpha yeah um their dividend grades on seeking alpha are everything's safety f growth f yield a minus consistency f okay so i have to subscribe i have to subscribe to see dividends you have to subscribe but honestly if you're if you're serious about your poking around on the internet for finding out and learning as much as, as you can about the individual companies or ETF or stocks or whatever, you know, they, they don't have stuff like ETFs, it's ETFs, but um, great platform. Can't okay, recommend great. it enough. It's, and the app's pretty decent too. You know, I get things sent to my work email all the time. Uh, okay. What was the next question? Uh, that was his only question. You know, we, we just say dump Ford okay. and buy something else. And get back to us. Yeah, some, sometimes you have to. You know, when did he buy into it? You know, I don't, if he I, didn't. I don't he didn't say. Much, I don't want to. Okay, I'm not gonna. I don't. I don't want to. You know, I don't want to get too personal. Um, but it's year over year, they're haven't really gone anywhere. It's it. It looks like a fourteen dollar stock. Okay, I have a fun little. I called them roller coasters. What did you call them? Uh, rough sailing, rough sailing. Okay. Here's something I bought 30 mm-hmm. shares of 
uh, two days ago. Let's the, see. What is it? Uh, Quebec Sierra QS. Quantum scape. This yeah. is new. What, what they, is this? They make solid state batteries for cars. Or, or they're researching it. They People went crazy about them for a little bit, but I didn't buy. And now it's it was at like $90, $90 a share. Now it's like, what, 9 bucks a share after all the excitement yeah, died down. Yeah, 9.35. What was that today? Uh, uh, it's running. Uh, it's got, let's see, operating income. Wow. Okay. Uh, it's going to See if they got value. I hate to be the old man here, but I'll be an old man here. Uh, quantum. Oh, they got their on. The other one wasn't on value line, but this is. I wonder how many. No, they haven't got anything on value line. Shit. Um, it seems like another one of these startup stocks yeah. that does really well at first when everyone had a bunch of liquidity in the market. Um, and then once those people took their profits on it, it just kind of, okay. Um, I, I'm not, I don't usually trade in stuff like this unless it has a couple of decent years, you know, decent right. financials behind it. Cause everything in here has got brackets around it. You know, net income is not lost, not lost, not lost. Yeah. I, it's cheap, you know, which is if they come out with something that's got, let's see what their what their news is. If they've got something, do they have anything that's that sets them apart from the rest of uh, whoever's making batteries? Yeah. What do they got that makes them special? So let's see, December, back in December, uh, uh, this is coming from Business Wire. Uh, Quantum Safe Corp uh, Corporation today announced it has shipped its first 24 layer prototype lithium metal battery cells to automotive o OEMs for testing. Deliver of these cells, referred to as AO samples, was the company's key public milestone for the year. Achieving this goal represents an important step toward commercial uh, commercialization of this technology. With 24 layers, each, comp each comprising a solid-state separator, a cathode, and an N-S-I-T-U-form lithium metal anode, these prototype cells have capacities in the multi-amp hour range, a range the company believes is relevant to the variety of applications, including automotive and consumer electronics. With these cells, the OEMs, can, the OEMs can start testing the process at their facilities and provide feedback on the performance of the cells. The company still has substantial work ahead to bring this technology to market, include improvements to the quality, consistency, and throughout its uh, production process. Uh, additional enhancements on the product side, such as increased cathode capacity, loading, and improved packaging efficiency. The company expects to deliver improvements on these fronts in subsequent generations of A, B, and C samples over the coming years. Uh, and then there's a quote saying from the CEO said, we're awesome and I have a hard on. The AO cells were built in QuantumScape's new cell format, which is another important goal for the year. This architecture is a hybrid between prismatic and pouch cells. So we're talking about how these battery packs are made. Um, okay. Has, yeah. has any of the auto manufacturers gotten back? Is there anything? Have, have any insiders started buying this? Because like, it sounds like it could be something if yeah. their product substantially makes an impact in it mm -hmm. um can i can i can i prod a little bit yeah why'd you buy this like was i'm not i'm not asking from a point of hostility or, or trying to be degradative well did when, you buy this because it was something that you like or because it was something you wanted to make money on i bought it because i wanted to take a chance and got it when i knew i bought this i got interested in quantum scape after i bought my kia nairo in the summer and knowing and then reading some article about okay these the current battery battery technology in uh evs is just a gigantic array of samsung laptop laptop battery cells or as close as as near as it makes no difference is that's what they are 
but a solid state because we're going to move away from, I guess we're still going to keep lithium, but we're going to move away from that into other sort of metals. And the idea is to no longer have a cell structure, but be able to have it sort of like one, it fills in the spaces between that. And the idea is to expand the, uh, the, ba the uh, energy density of, of a battery pack for an EV by something stupid like three times. So I have three times the range. Of course, that's very much the hype man pitch for it. And then my next thought was, okay, which companies are farthest ahead in making a workable solid state battery pack? And I think it was Forbes or something that said, okay, QuantumScape is leading. But probably everybody else like me saw that article and bought it back when it went up to $90 a share. Yeah, and you know, we gotta have, let's see what the earnings look like. Because I've just been flipping through the... Uh... I've just been flipping through the the, you know, the figures on it, and it's it's one of these companies that sounds like you know they they're very passionate about what the the product that they're offering the auto world. But we have uh, I think we got to give time a little bit to let this one cook to see if it's gonna um, yeah if it's gonna be a hit or miss. Right. You know, um, it's it's it, it if the progression of battery driven vehicles continues on the path that it does and a new battery technology and new materials used for uh, batteries come online and become viable, then I don't see why it, it wouldn't work. But right now it just seems, it seems very fledgling mm -hmm. and it seems like something that people got very excited about when it was yeah. launched and then it kind of just fizzled. Yeah. You know, not to say that they won't have growth potential in the future, Mm-hmm. But it's, it's if it, definitely if it makes you feel it better. Looks, it, sorry. No, no, go ahead. It, it, go ahead. If it makes you feel better, I bought this with dividend money. <laughs> so that's fine. Yeah. Hey, if you're just playing around with, there's nothing wrong with experimenting. I'm, you know, sometimes you look. I bought Alibaba right after the 2020 election, right what? before what? Uh, Jack Ma got got the the CCP kicking his door in. Wait, what? Would you buy? And, and it, it, I bought Alibaba. Oh, okay. Two ninety. Okay. You know, this was one of my blunt. This was my blunder of twenty one. Yep. Um, and it went through my. It went to the stop loss, and I said, "Dump it," and it, it just get rid of it. I'll take the L. Yeah. And some ideas are good, some are bad, mm -hmm. and that was a bad one. And I it with with that with quantum. What was it? Quantum QS? Quantum scale. Well, we have yet to see. Yeah, uh, we have yet to see where it goes. But the chart, it just it it looks like it's found its bottom. So yeah. you're not gonna lose your face on this. So don't worry. It's yeah. something to play around with. We got a question from Connor. Con <laughs> Connor, thank you for the generous donation. He has a question from Mike. Mike, I work in the F P and A, which I don't know what that means, uh, for a mm -hmm. publicly traded company. Each quarter, I write I write the earnings report. What do you usually go to whenever you look at the stuff guys like me write? Whenever I go to the stuff, I look go to your guys' websites, your investor pages, and I read through all the call transcripts. And I, it doesn't go unnoticed. You know, there's there's got there's us analysts out there. We go through it and we read it, and that's that's my poop scrolling. <laughs> is reading your guys uh, is reading the transcripts and reading everything so your work does not go unnoticed and you know and it's it's much appreciated that that information is out there for investors you know because it just it doesn't go unnoticed you want a good job thanks you th thanks connor and i rely on people like mike who read all that stuff to understand because i'm like too long didn't read <laughs> done pooping back to doing car stuff <laughs> <laughs> uh got to lower that fiber intake to read some of these. Mm. No uh, offense to them, but listening to the earnings transcripts calls, like just just listen. You can get all the audio from all the earnings transcripts and and you can listen to it in the car. Oh, that sounds like something I'd love to fall asleep to. <laughs> I've I've like honestly I've done, I've done that. I've dry done men that. <laughs> having conversations about real things. Oh, uh, let me. Okay, so one of the. Okay, so I have a couple of names here that I've been monitoring. 
Okay. And one of them I told you about a while ago is the Pennsylvania Real Estate Trust. Pre. P. R. Oh, hang on. P R E T. P R E T. Papa Romeo Echo Tango. Okay, this is current price a dollar thirty-two. Pack of bubble gum. Yep. It is a pack of bubble gum, and they are fighting to survive. Wow, I, I'm looking back. Two thousand and four, four hundred. No way. Is that real? They were four hundred dollars yep. a share. What was the mall by you? The Skuckle Mall? The Skuckle Valley Mall? The Skuckle Mall. Right. We're better Mall. than ever. <laughs> we're better than ever for you. <laughs> Why do I remember that, but I can't remember birthdays? <laughs> no way. Well, as uh, Peter Lynch sells, says, a stock can very well go to zero. Yep, it very well can. But. Some good news for them. Just clicked across the, uh, come on, computer, work with me here. Some very good news uh, came across wire the other day. I'll link it to you. Okay. Priet extends Woodland Mall mortgage, completes more asset sales. Yep, they're selling off stuff that they don't need, and they extended their they got a re, uh, extension on their bank revolver which is what a lot of people were worried about this was either going to go bust or it could be they could get their shit together and come out of this recession a winner okay it has yet to be seen but it's too they have too many assets with too much cash flow and they're too cheap to not consider hmm. you know it's a dollar 32 what can you buy for a dollar thirty-two? Does that buy you like a like a like a single patty hamburger at McDonald's these days? Yeah, I don't think so. So you think this company is going to get its act together in a little bit? It could get its act together, or it could get complete. They could liquid. Uh, they could liquidate it. Mm. You know, and uh, my boss actually flew out to Philadelphia uh, to have a one-on-one -on -one with some of these guys. Talk with them. I'm not going to say much more than that, but it's. It's very interesting. You know, it, it's a case of, hmm, people want to shop still. They like that shopping mall experience. But shopping malls have got to adapt to the modern world. I, I like I like this uh, anal, anal, uh I don't know if TD Ameritrade has this for every single one, but it says, this press relief contains certain forward-looking statements that can be identified by the use of words such as anticipate, believe, estimate, expect, project, intend, may, or similar expression. Forward-looking statements to expectations, yeah. beliefs, projections, future plans, strategies, anticipated events, and other matters that are not historical facts. These forward-looking statements reflect our current expectations and assumptions. of the. So, I guess it's... Uh, they're trying to prevent you to they're trying to dissuade inexperienced investors from uh hype man talk effectively. Uh, okay. It it just sounds like an AI tool that's scanning through stuff and picking up on keywords. Gotcha. Um good to know, you know, because you gotta you know when to listen for that, especially if the if the their earnings numbers are coming in and they sound like big shit. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no point if, if someone oh well we're hoping to uh to you know, in 2023, and and their numbers are just like, yeah, this ship's got three holes blown in it, and it's going mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. I Otis, I Otis. There's a very, very big Newfoundland dog here saying hi to me. Oh, hello! And he's knocking things over on the table next to me, and his tail's in my coffee. Come on, man! <laughs> Come on, Otis, beat it, beat it! Come on. Is that that one big black dog? I sent you a picture of that one time. Uh, maybe. I'll I'll send you one later. He's he's adorable. He's, he's okay. The, it's like Newfies are like one of the few dogs that I like. I got gotcha. Are they slobber slobbering dogs? Big time. No. Uh, anyway, got some Saint Bernard. In there. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Uh, we got a question Sorry. here from Kana uh, Kona Coyote. Thank you for your donation. Appreciate it. Uh, 
Connor asks, is this the end of the tech stock era or should this or should the or should this the a perfect time to uh, to dump into jump into? Well, OK, tech is a very, very, very wide segment. So why I believe the Nasdaq exists, right? Or am I wrong? Exactly. That's exactly why the Nasdaq exists. But it's tech is stocks are having their come to Jesus moment, effectively. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not they're they were overextended for a long time. Their their fundamentals did not line up with prices they were trading at. So while this could be an interesting buying opportunity, I don't we have yet to see how these layoffs and how the recession is going to affect all of the, you know, all the tech stock. Right. Sit like, earnings recently. You know, it, this recession's got to sit. This recession is fledgling. Mm -hmm. You know, it, the politicians are still scrambling to tell us that we're not in a recession. They can go fuck themselves. We are in a recession. Nice. Yeah. You know, and, and these, and the companies have got to report their earnings for a while with negative growth for everyone to realize uh oh recession bad stonks go down now again over time historically the stock market continues to go up yeah we are in a period of very rough there it is a what is it red sky at night you know sailor what's the, the adage it's about something sailing like that with the sun Something uh, like that. Red at night, sailors it, delight. Red in the morning, sailors take warning. Something like yeah, that. Yeah. It's a red sky in the morning right now. Right. So it's For, a case of do you want to take – look look at it as sailing. You know, some boats are big. Some boats are small. Do you really want to take your little kayak out when it's the, when the, the waves are – the white caps are 10 feet tall? Right. Yeah. Like, so now, like, if you're going to do anything – Invest in a big ship. Uh, I pulled up for people to see the big one, Alphabet, Google. Even Google's taking a hit. But like like right there, uh, for people looking in who can see this uh, on uh, on my screen, you see a nice ya da 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 You see the dip here, right here at 2009. That was the, you know, people make fun of right here. Right here's the pandemic. Look how little of a blip that was for Google. Just a little, uh-uh. Whereas down Especially here... Especially with all the liquidity that got dumped into the market. Yeah. But then you saw a steep rise here as we came out of the pandemic, the pandemic peak, which peaked, you know, around last year. And now what people... People want to call it a recession and call it, call, call it that if it, if it helps the cum come out. But this is more of a market <laughs> correction. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> that was brilliantly done. But if you look at here in the middle of the Bollinger Bands, the trend line just eh, just keeps going. It's, it's still uh, – they're still higher now than they were b from before the, the recession So or from before the pandemic. So, uh -huh. Uh, I'm going to go re Martini have my second one. Sustin Mew. There's a familiar place, uh, says I say crypto's the future Himalaya coin. I, we're not going to even talk about crypto. I mean, I mean, I could go on, a, out of here. I could go on a crypto rant, but okay. There's nothing behind that. On, there's no Paul, company. There's no GDP. Paul from the Sopranos. Sorry. Go ahead. Can Polly from The Sopranos answer this? Yeah, please. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> nice. Um, Victor Martinez, another super chat. Thank you. Thoughts on the stock symbol HD, Hotel Delta? Hotel uh, Delta. Let's see what we got. HD. Oh, the old home, home despot. Do, do, I'll be do, back. Do, I'm going to get do, a drink. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. For nineteen ninety five, you can rent this motherfucker. Yeah, I remember that. That was a great video. Home Depot, very very stable business. You know, I don't. Can is AI really going to find a way to replace going to the hardware store? Who knows? 
let me look at the fundamentals here and I will get back to you while Brian is remartinining. Uh, I guess I will play the host for now. I have no idea what everyone is saying in whatever chat he has open because I'm not looking at it. I hope everyone is having a lovely evening. Let's see, Home Depot. I mean, any, any retail store is going to go through declines in valuations for our recession. But hard, I, it's a fairly, yeah. I mean, I don't see Home Depot going away anytime soon, especially with that. Yeah, there it's fine. Where are their dividends paying? Eh. It, you've got when there's a recession going on, you have to let the negativity run through the market. You have to let people sell it off because when it when there's a recession and people don't want to buy stocks, they'll get into bonds. Now, I know that I've shat on bonds in the past, but but that was only when there was you know, sub, significant increase in the market when that tax package was introduced during the um, <clears throat> former administration. And while that may have been good for individuals who were quite well off and, and it was quite good for corporations, you know, there was quite, there is a quite big disparity in people who own stocks. And that's the problem. So. That's why I talk with people about it, because I want more people to be involved with it. Because it seems like a big, scary monster, the stock market trading and everything. But if you go about it, if you go about it safely, it's fine. I just want to get better at, at yeah. It is, but there's a lot of... I'm back. You know, there's a lot of down in the region. Welcome back, Brian. I've just been rambling on here about Home Depot and lumber. And we things. need oh. lumber. We need lumber. Let's see what their earnings look like. Oh, that was a Simpsons bit. Uh, okay. Pulling up my value line on Home Depot. I'm going to call my broker. <laughs> oh, man. I remember that. Do you remember that when, uh, when, when uh, my parents used to do that sometimes? I, I'm I'm old enough that I can remember where they called into a broker. Now the thing about value line is it doesn't factor in risk factor like recessions necessarily. Mm. It'll post them, you know, and it'll post periods of significant decline. Mm -hmm. Um. But it doesn't factor in future problems. It goes based off of the numbers that it has generated, based on sales per share, cash flow per share, earnings per share, so on and so forth. Um, Home Depot, overall, it's it it's a pretty safe bet. Yeah, they pay and a dividend. It's it's there. It's mm -hmm. there. It's not a big dividend stock. You know, it, it's, I believe, what was the dividend? 2.2. 2. Yep. 2. It's yeah. not a big dividend. It's it's a safe one. You know, the difference between this and a tech stock, we saw that big dip for the 2008 recession, but this one's much, much flatter. And then it ascends, it ascends, it ascends. There's, there's the pandemic. It ascends. Now, it did the exact opposite from the past year. It dipped down a little bit. Maybe everybody's not renovating their houses. I yep, wonder what their I wonder what their biggest the margin profession. stuff is. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, with, with you know with the re with talk of the recession beginning to set in and affect all assets traded, it naturally stocks will begin to decline. But it's the fundamentals that determine mm -hmm. which stocks will sink and which ones will float. Gotcha. It's like which is a good catch and which is a bad catch. It's all about fishing, mm -hmm. you know. And it's a case that you got if you catch something, you know, if you find something that looks good, 
and, and it's underweight. You can't catch it. You know, it's against fishing regulations. You throw it back. You look at stocks the same way. You don't get emotionally attached to them. You don't buy with your heart. You buy with your head. You know, it's a case of do you want to be right or do you want to make money? Do you want to please your ego or do you want to put, well, I almost fell off the chair. Or oh, do yeah. you want to put bread on the table? Yep. You, you, Was that you, a sign you, from God? Yep. You can be still paying. You can you can pay rent and have your principles. Mm hmm. I had that I had that talk with uh, my friend who I won't say the name, but anyway, um, Sustin Mew uh, again with a super chat. Thank you so much. Uh, secret IBM will explode in two years uh, with two N chips and comp. Not sure what you mean there, but we're looking at IBM right now. Man, t t IBM was a freaking stock back in the Mad Men days in like late seventies. IBM was like what Google is now. Now it's yeah. all over the place. Uh, IBM is the Joseph A. Bank of tech stocks. Who's that? Exactly. It's a very old money kind of chain-ish in well-off areas, super hmm. purveyor. I mean, IBM um, will always be it, around. It's very but... old money. Yeah. It'll be around. They have, they have, you know, they're, if they have a product that's coming out that's going to revolutionize things, then you know, then their stock could see if it makes a big splash, then it could potentially cause it to go back up. But overall, IBM's just kind of bouncing around. You know, they pay uh they pay a eight four point eight percent dividend, mm -hmm. and they pay it out on time seventy two percent. If they, I, yeah, if they, if they have something in the in the works, then good, then, then the market will do as they do with this stock. But as for you know, IBM has, I haven't really heard anyone talk about it for quite some time. It hasn't yeah, been on Bloomberg TV or anything yeah. lately. Yeah, I guess. But something well, about I'll, I'll keep an eye on that one. something about AI. I know I'm being bad right now. I'm just reading the headlines. IBM stock falls, still outperforms market, whatever, I don't care. <sighs> CAI Give that one, 6.5 out of 10. Andrew Palmer. Uh, Andrew Palmer, thanks for the donation. Uh, Andrew Palmer says, thank you for this. You think it's worth saving up for some... Now, there's a big stock symbol. Hold on, let me get this in here. He wants to know about... Here we go. Here's a stock symbol. It is Alpha Mike Kilo Alpha Foxtrot. And it's $2,140 a share. What the fuck is this thing? <laughs> um, what is this sweet? How, what, this has got no market volume. There is. Yeah, there's no liquidity in this. And it's exp what what do they even do? Is this an ADR? What's an ADR? American trade. It's basically a foreign stock listed on the American Stock Exchange. TD Ameritrade is a Denmark-based shipping and oil company. It's active in the container logistics and upstream oil valve chains. Company's operational structure composed of eight segments, blah, 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 blah. Manages go, a company's global container shipping activities. APM Terminals is responsible for container services and terminal activities. Includes container shipping line in Hamburg, Stuka, big, big uh, Eastern European word, uh, <laughs> Western European word. Uh, something oil. Uh, do you make the... Are you Cremera Industries from Seinfeld? Do you make the like the bladder system for like uh, oil tank ships? I mean, that's cool. It's, a, it's Maersk. Yeah, this is Maersk, the shipping line. Hmm. Right. AMK. Did I get this wrong? Oh my god. It's expensive as hell, but I mean, it's no, I didn't get it right. No, it is Maersk. It doesn't seem like it's going anywhere, but it's just very expensive. Hmm. 
Are the insiders buying this? Yeah, the insiders are buying. Well, their revenues have gone up year over, uh, especially in 2021. Their revenues, went, wow, their revenues jumped up. Where do you see that? I'm curious to see. I'm, I'm looking on Seeking Alpha right now. Okay. I'm curious to see what their earnings would be like. Revenue. It's a secure business. It's not going away. Okay. It's just very expensive. It's a case of it. They pay a dividend. I don't know if they pay a dividend. I'll say. And they don't pay a dividend. Mm. It's, yeah. It's expensive, man. I mean, I say just buy Chevron not, or something like that if you want some oil stuff. If you, yeah, if you want oil stuff, just buy the Exley. And granted, well, I say that while energy's. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, what's up again? Uh, maybe I should buy something. That looks good. It'll be good money. Okay. And the, right, uh, um, the, the other stock this guy said, he he just wants to look at, you know, GoPro. The guy, the people who make the tiny little cameras went public back in 2014. And it, it's been in steady decline. Uh, what's their ticker? Oh, it's Golf Papa Romeo Oscar. No, it's one of those. Household durables. Like Ferrari has great. Yeah, they, they oh, don't pay a dividend. Bad. Don't buy this. This is GoPro can't like GoPro's dog shit. It's I mean their cameras. Oh, I fine. use them. They're, they're they're a fine product. They overheat a lot. Their their product may be fine, but as a stock, this no, it doesn't look like it's very going. It's a specialty industry. That doesn't have very much innovation in it. You know, right. what? what's the next big thing that GoPro is going to come out with that's going to change the world? Yeah. You know, another new way for people to film Mersuit porn? <laughs> yeah. Like. Yeah, great. I got to make content. Yeah. Get out of here. A GoPro is a disposable camera. Like, it's worth less than an iPhone. <laughs> and. You put a GoPro on something, you don't mind if the whatever you're whatever you're filming crashes while the camera is like, oh well, I'm out three hundred bucks. Ooh. Tom Ponce has is a very generous donation. Do? Uh, thank you so much. He says, Hey Brian, I just wanted to know that your response to the other your response the other night to being able to live anywhere was so terrible that my noodle wasn't even al dente this morning. Thanks. What do you mean? That your response to the other night to being able to live anywhere. Well, I don't know what I said, but thank you for the donation. I guess I, I was kind of doing a, uh, um, maybe a reference to when we reviewed the Geo Metro. Like you'll be sub, sub you'll be subscribe, you'll be surprised to what you can live without. I mean, when I lived in Alaska, my entire life was two suitcases and a shoulder bag. So. Um, great. Uh, but yeah, thank, thanks Tom. And thanks for liking my silly show and donating. Um, I see a, a regular chat here. I'll just give a quick answer. Seth Thomas says, what is your take on charge point? Um, all these companies, uh, electrify America and stuff, you might as well be playing darts with, uh, boxing gloves and just throwing stuff. Cause no one knows it's so new. And as a guy who has an EV, the it's kind of catch as catch can where you got to charge these things because it's not really a question of can can you get electricity in the car it's more of the software that runs these things so we don't know who's going to become the, the 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 standard for, and we may not even have one because you go to some parts of the country it's charge point then there's electrify america then there's blink then there's volta it's who knows man um Throw some, throw some money that you don't uh, that you're not afraid of losing at, at this. But otherwise, I'd, I'd say no. Uh, Sustin Muse says, uh, and I don't know how to answer this, but it's a good question. 
Any guesses about when nuclear nuclear electricity will come? Like what? The like the ones we have now? Well, we have nuclear power plants, bro. But they're all from it's the seventies. It's the case 70s. of the fucking anti nuke boomers who protested and protested until they were blue in the face against nuclear energy. The same people who protested against Concord and any sort of advancements yeah. that we could have had. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, would, um, I hope for more nuclear power because it's the only green energy we bloody have. Right. Yeah. Eventually, you're eventually it's going to come back. Like on a long enough timeline, we run away. We, we're going to run out of fossil fuels. And when that happens, <laughs> guess what? Fire up those reactors. Yeah. Brian, you want to hear something crazy? What? Uh, look. <clears throat> All right. Let me tell you something, Ramon Burton. Uh, Brian, Mr. Regular. Uncle Joey. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I'm about to go Uncle Joey on you. Oh, that's All right. good. Do you know that the that I think it was Rothschilds, whoever was the big oil mongol back in the early 1900s, cut a substantial check to the board of you know the, the school board administration. You know whoever just paid the education system to write that oil comes from fossils. In all the textbooks. Mm. Like he made a substantial donation and then bam, they're called fossil fuel suddenly. Interesting. Yeah. You know, I I don't, you know, while I trade in all this stuff, I don't necessarily trust businesses either. You know, I know that they are fucking shady. Oh yeah. And it's a shame what they've done to a meritocracy yeah. and you know American capitalism. Yeah. You know, because it's uh, transformed into something that is more corporatism. Without, without meaning to sound like Ben Shapiro, you know, it, it's, it's more corporatist. Than my name is Ben Shapiro, and I have uh, three pencils in my ass. I break I have them three off. pencils in my ass, and I you can statistically not prove that I am not pissing myself right now. Right now. Can you believe Can you? Uh, right now. <laughs> Why is he so easy to do? <laughs> because statistically, Ben Shapiro is the easiest person to mock because he sounds like every fucking nerd that we know growing up. The one who talks too fast just to get his point. Yeah. 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 Anyway. <laughs> My name's Ben Shapiro. I'm gay. <laughs> I am Ben Shapiro, and I have an easy, easy cheese nozzle for a minute. <laughs> My name is Ben Shapiro. You cannot prove I got an easy bake oven just to make. The dildo, a little bit softer. But you think I'm going to? No, I will put it in the freezer and break it off in my ass. You cannot prove this. <laughs> so You cannot statistically prove that the dildo will not break off in half. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, we just derailed. No, this no, no, this thing. is odd. This, this, this is a good pod. <laughs> uh, Kona Coyote says, this is a great podcast so far. Both of you and Mike have amazing stories and humor. Is this going to be a regular thing? You cannot statistically prove this. I cannot think of a better thing to do than drink at 11 p.m. on a Monday night. Well, thank you so much. Your your donation is definitely uh, going toward, uh, you know, get Nick out of a Ford money and also uh, the crazy taxi, which will go to Chicago. My God. God, I want it. I want to ride around in that thing in fursuit so bad, please. We're gonna do it. Yeah, like oh I need a, God. I need a, fin I need a, I need to buy one. Like, talk about like adult things. I'm just waiting to hear back from my accountant to know how much I owe. I mean, I know I overpaid this year in my quarterlies. Maybe I don't owe anything. Maybe I'm gonna get a little bit back. Maybe it'll just be a little bit more for Uncle Sam. But once I know what I owe for for 2022. Then I can go buy either your 1962 or 1963 Fal uh, Falcon, right? Uh, Galaxy, and get that thing wrapped with a checkerboard pattern. Um, uh, and yeah, like I, I want to have it done for like late spring because I got I got stuff to do, and hopefully it won't be as bad because all I really need to I'm not going to modify it apart from you know a Holly sniper kit, you know, get some fuel injection on this thing, but. Uh, yeah, definitely bring that thing to Chicago. That'll be such a nice ride. Uh, oh my God. I can't yeah. wait. To, I can't Top wait to down. have you. Possibly, you know, cause we got a, I got a great environment for you to, Sweet. for you to like, great town. Um, yeah, I miss Chicago. That, that, 
Dude, I gotta show I gotta show that to card of my sister because she loved the crazy taxi game growing up. Anyway, oh, sorry. Nice. Sustin Mew uh, has a follow up. Uh, says sorry, they were talking about fusion energy. Uh, well, I don't know. Uh, talk to ne- uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson about that. Uh, like. They made fusion, like, they had a net positive of joules and energy for, like, a fraction of a second, but it's it's more, it's, it, it, it proved that this can, like, the math works. You you can defy physics, or as uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson said, or maybe he didn't make up this, this, this quote, but the universe is under no obligation to make sense to you. Uh, they were able to get more energy God, out than they put that. in. So for, for a fraction of a second. God, I love Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yeah. I love that. How he, he is does... the uncle I wish I had. Totally. Yeah. Imagine like, <laughs> what, what if he's just like a serial explainer in real life that it becomes like not fun? What if he's just like explaining would, things all the time? I like to imagine that he's quiet when he's on his own. Yeah. Like he just wants peace and to ponder things. He seems like a big thinker. Yeah. Even the fire agreed. That's the what fu- that pop was. Anyway. Mm. I'm sitting next to a fireplace right now. Oh, awesome. Cool. I Good old cold Wisconsin. What, what's the outside temperature there? Uh, it's actually quite warm here. 38 right now. Oh, sweet. Oh, that's t-shirt and shorts weather. We're going to go fire up the barbecue. Nice. Uh... <laughs> Uh, oh yeah. Speaking of like not liking the system but playing it anyway, mm. uh, uh, my contribution check went in. And when I say for for people to listen, when I say contribution, that just means funding my IRA. And funding my IRA just means putting money in the stock market. Uh, I took half of what I had and just put it into Goldman Sachs, even though, like, oh, we're going through you know, the valuation of the dollar, it's like, right, but this is the bank that owns banks that owns other stuff and their dividends pretty good. So I don't agree that a lot of the treasury sec, like I know it's the, the kids today would call it very sus that so many of the, uh, like, uh, treasury <laughs> secretaries were former Goldman Sachs employees, but I'm like, well, you know, Hey, it's a winner. So they keep going. So that's what I, that's what I did. I forget what else I. You want to prove a point, or you want to make money? It's it's a very good case of that. Yeah. You don't have to agree with it. You're just trying to put bread on the table. Yep. I don't want to be a poor old man. Uh, I'm gonna go grab some food quick. I'm gonna grab some food quick out of the microwave. Um. Mm. People are in the chat are talking about fusion. Uh, They're talking about fusion. Yeah, I mean, okay, I, don't, I don't have your chat open. I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, I, we're broadcasting on regular and Roman right now. Um, person in the chat has a question about this stock. Uh, stock symbol is Alpha Lima Bravo, A L B. It's a uh, materials chemicals. I'll be right back. Basic material sector, specialty chemicals. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of reading up on this, and I will get while Brian goes through doors violently. Alberman. Specialty chemicals. What are they? They look like a mining company. Uh, Ernie. Mm. Mm. Got good. Okay. Visions. I. Okay. 
back. Okay. I've just been reading through this. It seems like a expensive lithium company. Now, while I agree with people buying lithium companies because it's got to come, batteries got to come from somewhere. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's very overpriced. But, you know, these pieces, people are starting to talk about a lithium slowdown. Mm -hmm. Could affect it in the future. Might affect it. It's. It looks like you know, everyone's saying there's more bull reports than bear reports on it. It's not got a good dividend payout, but they're wow, what is estimated revenue? Got good estimates for this coming year, but we'll see what their earnings are like. Let's see, when's their call date? Uh, a simple question here. When I look at my uh, two fifty. When I look at my summary of a security here on TD Ameritrade, uh, mm -hmm. market cap, does that refer to the total value of all the shares outstanding, or is that's not the earnings of the yeah. company? No, it's not earnings. Okay. <clears throat> no, mar no, market capitalization is the total dollar value of a company's outstanding shares. Okay. I don't know. I mean, it's it just looks very expensive. Mm -hmm. do they own it already, or are they are they are they holding it, or are they? They just they wanted to know. It, they or? just wanted to know our opinions about it. Positive growth, but with all the time, you know, I don't I don't know what the. I, I I haven't heard much talk beyond people saying, "Oh, so and so is warms that we could have a potential lithium shortage," and so and so just be on the basic news ramblings, but it just looks expensive to me mm -hmm. right now. Well, their chart, they've been around since 03 or at least. Yeah. They're not going back. Away. Yeah. If you wanted to just buy the specialty chemicals. Buddy. Oh, the, the person who asked this question says they already have a few, few shares. So if you got them. I mean, if you like it, keep it. When did they, well, when did they buy in? You know, I don't mean to. I don't mean to prod, but well, they can go ahead and say it because I'm looking at, I'm looking at the whole. I'm looking back 20 years. They can go ahead and say. Yeah, I'm. I mean, if they bought it at the pandemic, great. I mean, even if they bought it back at the height of uh, two administrations ago, back in 2017, 2018, there was still money ahead on it. Hell, if they bought it the you know if they bought it in April of last year and held it until now, they're still a decent chunk. Mm -hmm. You said he bought it two months it ago. Seems like a oh boy, two months ago. Okay, all right. So uh, you, you're down maybe back in yeah. I mean, if you oh, bought yeah, it in January, down. you're up. So. But, you know, I wouldn't really bother about worrying about stuff in terms of months unless you're doing uh, uh, Mike's plan where, where you read a lot and read a lot and can be in and out in a month. Um, if you're uh, in and out in a day or a month or a week, you, know, you, yeah. have, to have, the, you have to have the ability to trade. This mm -hmm. stuff. You know, it's, it's, it's a case of do you want to hold this as a long-term investment, which is what most people probably will want to do. Mm -hmm. It just seems very expensive and exposed to a lot of uh, possible downside, you know, right. if, in the coming years as EV sales begin to slow with the coming recession, you know, because unfortunately, not, you know, companies are not recession. Well, there some are recession proof, some are not. It's just time to test them and see which ones are going to make it without meaning the sound too doomer you know right. I, I don't mean to, to shit on everyone's parade here no but we are in a period of great uns of, of pretty great uncertainty yeah so to make people feel better here here's a here's an l i took and i still didn't get out of it and i'm probably gonna keep it just to remind myself that you can fuck up royally and by by fuck up i mean only fuck up to the tune of like 700 bucks but i bought a bunch of carvana uh oh Boy. 
Oh. Oh. Oh, this company sucks. I, I, oh, I, no. I ruined my orgasm. No. So, yeah, Carvana is going in the ditch once they realize that people were that they were selling stuff they didn't even have titles to. Yeah. I, they're going to get sued through the floorboards on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I love that I get the remind I hear their the 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 disaster that is their un, the, the unfolding disaster that is their their current situation. Mm-hmm. No offense, I'm just talking about the company as a whole. Right. And on my drive into the office down I ninety, um, I go Carvana just built a new giant car dispenser in mm-hmm. Scumberg, Schaumburg, mm-hmm. Illinois, and I see it and I'm like. How long until that is turned into a spirit of Halloween? Hell yeah. <laughs> it happens. Shit mm-hmm. happens. You know, we're well intentioned and we think that there's a good idea, but then it turns out that these companies are run by shit bags, mm-hmm. you know, and that's the unfortunate circumstances. Mm-hmm. You know, that's where a lot of the, uh, where a lot of value guys like me find that's where we get. <laughs> When you compare us to growth guys, that's, that's where we start to go. Uh, hold on, L- let me look at some numbers here. You know, there's. Uh, I, do, I don't mean to, to get far too off track here. No, please. My boss has a friend. My boss has a friend who's was a high up at a bread company one day. Um, you know, now retired, and they. Um, ones on one side of you know. My boss is a value guy. This guy's a growth guy. My boss is mildly right wing. This guy is mildly left leaning. You know, they're they're the little bit of the polar opposite of each other. They're not. They don't hate each other. They're friends first and mm-hmm. foremost. They they banter back and forth. But I always hear, you know, I always hear Mister W talking. That's the, the the growth guy talking to my boss about you know some great idea that he found and oh it's got the potential to go this and that and. You know, when the getting's good and when they're, you know, you find them low and they start going crazy, you know, ride it, sell mm-hmm. it. That's his investing style. But for someone like my boss, it's just not the, you know, it's it's a case of, okay, if I buy in now, is it going to go tits up because it comes out they're selling cars they don't got the titles to? Mm-hmm. You know, and, and they're going to get sued into oblivion now. And mm-hmm. I'm stuck holding a, you know, what, what's their ticker? What's Carvana? C-A-R-V- C-V-N-A. Okay, I'm holding it. Oh, boy. I'm, oh, yeah. I'm holding it. <laughs> I haven't Uh-oh. looked at it. Wow. Oh, my God. That is a... Oh. Yeah, I'm holding a $283 bag of diarrhea that just broke on my head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No offense, bro. Hey, you know, I look down there and laugh. Because my other biggest loser, talk about a company that can't sustain itself, like Carvana, versus another one that took a big hit. I had a whole bunch of uh, BlackRock, and I'm like, when uh, (laughs) when the Ukraine when the uh, the war in Ukraine kicked off, it's like, oh, BlackRock, you owned a bunch of land in Russia, didn't you? Uh oh. But during this whole mess, they kept paying their dividend. I'm like, you know what? All right. I'll I'll ride it out. You'll come yeah. back eventually. Because what are you buying? Land. All right. Fine. You want to hear a hot take that really that 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 my well, someone close to me got caught holding the got caught. Yeah. Not not a bad thing, but but they bought RSX. RSX They're at the yeah. What is this? That's the Russian ETF. Oh. It's not even yep. listed on they TD Ameritrade. Because it it's not trading. They suspended all trading. Ah. Uh. But he bought it when it was around about $7 a share, and he's just locked into it right now. You can't, mm. you literally can't get rid of it. Mm. Yeah. But imagine that, you know, imagine one day the war in Ukraine ends. Yeah. You know, and, and, and those businesses are allowed to trade on the stock market again one day be it one day you know mm-hmm. i'm not advocating for russia here god knows i don't like them um but if you're you know if it historically has traded let's see let's go by year this is by day let me expand this yearly 
the average looks like around about $25 and he bought in at seven. It could just be one of those. He got lucky, Mm -hmm. but again, I'm not advocating to buy Russian anything. Right. Anyway, that's my bet. That's a good Armad just has a general question. This is an easy one. What do you think of Coca-Cola? And I'm like, there, the, this is one of these companies. You think of Coca-Cola, yeah. it's not the drinks that they own. It's the companies that co- to, that Coca-Cola owns. They yeah. own a lot of the franchise fast food restaurants. What else do they own? Yep. They're like McDonald's. Yeah, think about all the international brands. They own international brands, too, across many, many markets. K, and there's also another, what is it? K... Oh, I, oh, they have a European. But I've made money on Coca Cola before. Coca Cola was a win for me. You know, yeah. I I bought them in late 2019 and sold them in early 2020 when I needed liquidity. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was a winner, and it's Coke's not going away. People still want their their chemical slurry beverage. Yeah, they need you know? their sugar. And if that. I need my corn syrup. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at comparison charts. Coca-Cola versus Pepsi. Actually, what on earth is this stock? Charlie Echo Lima Hotel. I've never heard of you. What are you? Echo Lima. Celsius Holdings. Yeah, they got a lot of market, a lot of liquidity. It came up when I just said, uh, like, they just compared Coca-Cola to similar other things. What on earth? Did, what is the summer? What is this? Is this, Celsius? is this the energy drink? This is Celsius, the energy drink. Huh. I love Celsius. That's a, it's a good alternative to Monster. It's actually, Vanos introduced me to that at TFF. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Wow, look Monster. at that gross since 2020. It's complying. God damn, I would have loved to have owned that thing. It's been around for a while, too. They've been around. Been. It's around for two. Yeah. Imagine, buy, imagine buying that at the, at its IPO back in 2007. Everybody's laughing you at you back in 2009. It just totally shits the bed. Bounces back, does nothing for five years, and now it's up there. Holy moly. Does nothing for five years, and then you see it start to pip. It goes above. Like it trades at four dollars for five years. Yeah, it goes above six. That, and and if you've been watching that, that would have been the perfect time to buy. Yeah, that was like me with Neo, the Chinese EV company Neo. I yeah. bought that motherfucker at two dollars a share. Yeah, I was oh. I sold it on a plane. I w- I ordered myself a double <laughs> vodka cranberry after yeah. I sold it on the plane. Hell yeah. <laughs> Oh, I was laughing to the bank. <laughs> I had a good, that was a good day. That was, I was like, oh, wow, I needed some pick me up during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank you. So, my uh, take on Celsius yeah, is, is that, okay, it doesn't pay a dividend, even though it's been around for a while. Uh, wait a minute. Did, does this even give me, yeah, P, P, there's no PE ratio. I mean, it's probably overvalued as hell. Oh, financial strength. No, their financials look not bad, but their operating income is going to go down. This, this of course, because everything's getting more expensive to run and operate these days. Yeah. Um, I, I are they owned by anyone? No, are they still owned? Oh, whoops! I just completely cleared everything I was looking at. Okay, that's okay. I'm going to take a question here. Uh, <laughs> Jake Souza, thank you for the generous donation. Love your content. Been watching since the Echo days. I've got a 2002 Mercedes C32 AMG if you're interested to review. My girlfriend has an O2 Impreza Sport with the continuously variable transmission if you're interested in as well. Uh, thank you so much for offering. Uh, thank you for donating. Uh, go to regularcarreview.com. That's where our uh, submission form is. I don't know. It's been a while since we did an AMG. Did he say C42? Like, is that a W202 or a 203? Uh, C32. 
C32. So that's, yeah, but is it the W203 platform or the 202? Wait, uh, it's a two. Because I remember the last time. I remember the last time I was on one of your streams, someone brought up the W203 after I had a few drinks. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, I hate them. They are so, oh, God. (laughs) I mean, I bet the the AMG one's probably fun to drive and beat on. I I will give it that. It looks like a fun drive, but anything else is just, they are such dog shit. (laughs) Just speaking as a Merc guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I don't mean to gatekeep or shit on anyone's joy. Right. But it's not the it's not the it's not the early 90s anymore. God, it is the peak of the Daimler Chrysler era garbage. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's just it's the I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We're getting off track. It's okay. All right, it's all good. Uh Jake Sosa says located in Westchester, PA, and I don't know what that means. Jake Sosa I'm scrolling back up to see what you were talking about. Is he related to Sammy? Sammy Sosa. Jake the baseball Sosa. player. Uh, nah, that's bad. Sorry. Jake Sosa. I got it. No, I can't find his original thing, so I don't know. Uh, located in Westchester. Is he referring to a company that's in Westchester? Or the cars in Westchester? Oh, the cars are in Westchester. Oh, okay, so you're local. Cool. Um, I mean understand that if we're doing an early 2000s Mercedes uh the review ain't gonna be good oh four rich oh eight bankrupt <laughs> I I love oh four rich so much same um, here dude like it's a like midnight club dub edition yeah an escalade on spinners hell yeah I'd rock yeah. that shit love it Victor Martinez <laughs> says, why do luxury cars have boring names with numbers and letters? I mean, that's kind of like a German thing, I guess, and we associate that with luxury cars. It's because it used to mean the engine displacement, but car manufacturers are as fake as any hot new fursuiter on the market these Hell days. Yeah. So, meh. Nah. Yeah, the numbers mean nothing until I see what's under the bonnet. Uh, Jake Sosa, like again... Follower can- yeah. Sorry. Yeah, these are the people. <laughs> not only did they budget for a suit, they budgeted to uh, have one of those companies uh, have a click farm company up their follower count. Yep. And they also bought one of those strap on plush dongs and took pictures <laughs> of it for their AD account. Uh, I, 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 I got some pictures to send you. Oh, God. Hmm. All right. Sorry, throw it on the fire. Uh, Oops, as over the blunt door. Jake Sosa, wow, again with a generous donation. Thanks, man. Uh, that was brought. Uh, that was me who brought up that a while back. Uh, I I'm a tech at Mercedes Benz of Westchester. Okay, I wouldn't expect yeah. anything less than an absolute roast. Thank you. Uh, get oh, in... good. He's not going to be upset by it. Yes. All right, Jake. Get in my DMs in any of the social media that you choose. Remind me that you were the super chat, that you have an AMG down in Westchester. I'll uh, try to set something up. I like guitars with a uh, super chat saying, what is my opinion on a 1999 Chevy Monte Carlo Z34? That was my first car. I mean... The, the greatest thing about a Monte Carlo is that appeared in The Simpsons, there were these two gold diggers, and they, uh, oh, look at this thing. I mean, gosh, there's so much car here and not so much interior. I guarantee when you open those doors of this thing, the doors are going to sag. Monte Carlo. I know what those seats are going to feel like. It's going to feel like squidge. Like the word squidge. The word squidge. If you can sit on squidge. Yeah, Yeah, these uh, seats are going to be squidgy. The... uh, I like how it's a coupe, but it's clearly a sedan. That's like another late 90s, early 2000 things. 
Although, really, that goes back to the... This one. Hmm. I miss when makers would do that, you know? would make a sedan and a coupe variant. Yeah. I mean, it's just a sludge of General Motors blobby plastic on there. It's like, is this a Camaro? Is this a Lumina van? Who knows? You know what it is? It's a meatball sub. It yeah. It's the job done. It does. This doesn't was... matter how it's packaged or what bread it comes on. Yeah. It's a meatball sub. You know what you're getting. Uh, I like guitar it says the doors do sag, but the seats are leather and comfortable. <laughs> well, good. I'm at the time of my <laughs> life where I need lumbar and I'm looking at those seats and they make, they lo make my lower back hurt just by looking at them. That's why I'm happy the Alpha has good seats because I couldn't have a daily driver that doesn't have a good supportive seat for a yeah. large American like me. <laughs> well, it is uh it is eleven yeah, well, it's ten thirty. Yeah, ten thirty here, eleven thirty here. Uh if I keep talking to you, I'm gonna keep imbibing in my favorite beverage. And that's no good for tomorrow because I got stuff to do. So we're going to call this a night. And thank you so much right. for everybody who is watching. Uh, thanks to Mike for showing up. Thanks for talking about stocks. You are Absolutely. welcome back anytime you want to do this. You want me at any time, just give me a call. I'll All right. Be on here. Thanks, man. If you want to roast first? If you want to roast people's cars next, we'll do that again. Hell yeah. That's Go uh, down God Facebook God. Marketplace. <laughs> Oh, God. Yep. Yeah, we'll go down that rabbit hole. Yeah. Thank you for having me on, Brian. Thank you, Mike. Thank you to everybody who donated, and uh, thanks for watching the videos, and uh, 